Did you know that the River Thames was much wider than it is today? There are lots of places where you can see this, but the most noticeable is on the north bank of the river. You just need to know where to look. This is the latest iteration of the Velvia film brand, made from different materials to the original. Fuji claims this film stock to have the world's highest level of colour saturation and vibrancy with fine granularity. Amongst film photographers, it is often promoted as the best colour positive film for landscapes or nature photography. However, Fuji claim it can be used for wider purposes such as fashion work, product work, interior, as well as artwork. Above all, the film has been produced for photographers who are looking for accurate real life colour reproduction as well as incredible sharpness in the images. This particular version of Velvia is set at a daylight speed of ISO 50. There is also Velvia 100 available for those looking to shoot a film with highly comparable results. I chose to shoot with this today as you can see, the weather was exceptional. No need to worry about the ISO 50. This film is currently available in 35mm and 120 format. Unfortunately, the 8x10 was axed in December 2021 and the 4x5 is set for discontinuation in March 2023. Depending on what type of camera you are using or shooting with, it will inevitably give you different number of frames. With 35mm, you can get 36 frames, although with practice, you can easily get this up to 37 or maybe even more. In medium format, it can range from 6, 8, 10, 12 or 15 if you're shooting a roll of 120. As you can see from these images, it was a very bright and sunny day. If you're going to be shooting casually in these conditions, perhaps on a beach or even snow in the winter, anything with a large reflective surface that set your aperture to f16 and you're good to go. Otherwise, f11 should be sufficient. In hazy sunlight, consider moving down to f8. And if there is considerable cloud coverage, then f5.6. If you're in the shade or shadows and your camera allows it, then f4. Depending on your circumstances and experience with shooting slide films, you may want to adjust up or down half a stop during the summer or the winter. If you are shooting indoors, perhaps backlighting a subject, you may need to go up or down one stop in your aperture adjustments. Don't want to have to do all the maths? Then use a light meter such as this iconic L308X. The amount of times I've mentioned this brand, you'd think I'm getting a cut. As you can see from my images, some of these have been exposed to extremely bright conditions. If you are shooting in a seaside location or snow landscapes in Lapland or distant bright views, as you can see from these images, it is advisable to use a UV filter, number 2C or a number 2B. For bright cloudy conditions, you can use a Rattan number 81A filter and make an appropriate aperture adjustment plus one, two or three stops. For early morning or twilight portraits, use number 82A or number 82C filter and adjust aperture stops accordingly. I have not shot this film using flash, so I'll have to get back to you on this on another video. If for some reason you are shooting long exposures in this film, then be warned that reciprocity failure will happen after four seconds. So appropriate color balance and exposure conversations will need to be put in place. Did I mention this iconic L308X? Remember a few weeks ago, Britain was going to melt off the surface? Well, we're still here, but much of the grass is toast and well, the reservoirs are pretty dry. I digress. You may remember Remember, I posted a video on how to store your film in extreme heat. If you haven't, be sure to watch that after. In short, with anything that is valuable to you, look after it. With film prices these days, it's not one you can play games with. For processing, take it to a reputable film lab, as they'll be able to give it some special E6 love. For those of you who have your own labs, you already know what to do. This role was developed in a lab with flatbed scanning on an Epson V600. However, there are quite a few other cheaper alternatives available, especially if you've got a small smartphone there are so many apps out there pick one and you can scan with that alternatively you can use home scanning machines such as a plus tech editing or retouching your film is that even allowed it might be a bit of a faux pas subject but a few tweaks here and there might get it to where you exactly need it for the purists out there i hope you had your fingers in your ears if you do find that special shot in amongst the frames that you've shot 35 millimeter or medium format then get it scanned in high res and print it out stick it on your wall enjoy the fruits of your labor otherwise it will just end up in a folder taking a boat trip along the river thames is one of the most fun things to do in london 
particularly in the summer. If you haven't taken a boat trip yet, you can do so by jumping on, on any major node along the river, such as Westminster or the Tower of London. Loving these colours? Then that's the review done for you. Go shoot some. I've been shooting lots of Ektachrome and Provia on medium format. I have absolutely loved the saturation of colour, but the fact that you can see the image right out of development is like being a kid in a candy shop. Just want more and more. From what I have read about Wellview 50, as long as you're storing them well after processing and scanning, such as archival boxes, then these films will be able to last a lifetime. Who needs a hard drive? Want to learn more about photography or film? Then hit up my journal at hassanabass.com. If you have shot Velvia 50, thinking about it, or have film photography gems to share, then let me know in the comments below. Punch the subscribe button while you're at it. Check out my last video here. I was shooting a whole bunch of different film stocks. I'll see you on there.